Good day, fellow investors. On Sunday, we updated on oil and oil stocks, and today I want to update on gold, as we haven't done that for a while. I received a lot of messages when gold was around 2000, when gold, 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 and I thought, no, I'll make an update when the sentiment is bad, because then it's when you can find the best investment opportunities. You have to buy gold or consider gold when nobody else wants it. When it's exuberant, then you know it's just a momentum trade, you have to be very quick. But let's take a look at the fundamentals, we'll look at the investing strategy I am applying for my portfolio with 20 positions, and then also we'll discuss free gold stocks, analyze them, discuss the risk and reward, and see how gold or gold miners might fit your portfolio. I think you'll get a lot of value from this video, so all I ask is for you to click that like button. So if we look at gold prices, there is one certainty, which is volatility over the long term. 2011, we had a boom in gold prices, then total crash, bad sentiment, gold miners fell 90%, gold miners like Barrick, so big names, and then a rebound as the Fed was unable to push rates higher, started printing, and gold started going up already when the Fed started having those repo issues before the COVID crisis. So here we are now, peaked in August, and since August it started going down, down, and down, bad sentiment. And if you wonder why is this happening, well, gold is related to interest rates. As interest rates went down, 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 and money was printed, gold was more attractive as, let's say, a protector of real value. However, what has been going on since August is that interest rates started to going up. Of course, if you don't get any rate from gold and treasuries are at 0.5, there is not much difference. But with the treasury going higher, higher and higher and being now, what is it, 150, 160, then suddenly gold becomes less interesting. And here you can see the really, really strong correlation as interest rates went down, gold went up and vice versa. Versa. So for now, for the shorter term, this is the biggest impact on gold prices. And as people see normalcy in the economy, everything going back to normal with a lot of liquidity, good jobs, good interest rates, then of course gold isn't that much of an importance because it's more of a fear asset. So people seek protection. Now they also have a competitor in the form of Bitcoin. So protection and those assets do really well when people seek protection around strong sentiment. And if we look at the sentiment since August, now you start seeing these outflows because people see, okay, it went up, now it goes down, better sell. And at some point it will start going up again and this sentiment will turn fast as it always does. But this is the market and volatility is how it normally works. Now, before discussing the investing strategy with gold, I have to make a test with you. If you can survive Warren Buffett's perspective on gold, then you might consider having gold in your portfolio. If you are too scared when you hear what Buffett has to say, then forget about gold. It's very important to discuss Buffett's perspective because it will give you a clear perspective on exposure. I have received many emails of people that had 75% in gold and gold miners in August. You know the result. Exposure, how to play it, how to consider it, and what can be the benefits for you over the long term. So Warren Buffett said that gold gets dug out of the ground in Africa or someplace, then we melt it down, dig another hole, bury it again, and pay people to stand around guarding it. It has no utility. And if we look at demand for gold, okay, 48% is jewelry, but the rest is central banks or ETF that don't really provide utility with that gold. And Buffett says that gold is going long on 
fear. If we look at what Beric says about gold price drivers, it's financial demand depending on the US dollar, real East interest rates, physical demand from China, India, jewelry, central banks, mine supply, flat. But gold is very, very peculiar because it is going long on fear. And if we are talking about fear, I will update on this on Saturday. So really dig into what Ray Dalio has just said about bonds. So please subscribe for that and click that notification bell to get the notification. Because Ray Dalio said that it is very ugly for bonds and very ugly for the dollar. And why the heck would you own bonds? If people don't own bonds, then they might go to gold, which might give it another push up over the medium, long term, perhaps even short term. You never know. However, there is one strategy and a strategy also Ray Dalio applied, which is simply to have exposure to gold, depending on the risk. If it goes up, you balance it down. If it goes down, you increase a little bit and then you get a good yield on that volatility. For me, even better if you do it with gold miners. And this is my forecast for uh, gold. For me, it is a volatility play. For Buffett, it is going long on fear. I think there will be fear, there will be good times. So I am ready for gold going to below 1000 possible, no problem. And I am ready for gold going to 2,500, depending on how the economy and how things will look like in the future. But I'm ready for both and I'm implementing both in the strategy because you never know what can happen. Before we dig into the strategy a little bit more about Buffett and he spoke about gold in 2011 when gold was close to current prices and he considered it a bubble. And he was completely right because since then it really crashed. From 1,900 it fell to 1,050 or something like that. So Buffett was very prescient on that in 2011. And now he first, as always, Buffett value investing, he focuses on risk. How is risk measured? And that's something you have to keep in mind. Risk is not the volatility, but it's the recent probability of that an investment causing its owner a loss of purchasing power over his contemplated holding period. And then he discusses three major categories of investments and that's what we're going to show and how gold fits that. So the first, what we'll discuss on Saturday, bonds. And he says their beta may be zero, but the risk is huge because you have fixed upside in the form of small yields and huge decline in the form of purchasing power. So he says the dollar has fallen a staggering 86% in value since 1965 when I took over management of Berkshire. It takes no less than $7 today to buy what $1 did at the time. This is probably now $10 if it was 7 in 2011. So this is what is a certainty. So on the contrary, gold might give you protection for inflation over the long term. But keep in mind, it doesn't produce anything. So it can be a volatility play, which I, is what I prefer. Now, second type of investment, gold, Bitcoin. So the second major category involves assets that will never produce anything, but are purchased in the buyer's hope that someone else who also knows that the assets will be forever unproductive will pay more for them in the future. Buffett mentions tulips, gold, bitcoins fall into that category too. So it requires an expanding pool of buyers. So you have to watch the pool of buyers who in turn are enticed because they believe the buying pool will expand still further. At some point, the buying pool starts contracting and then you are in trouble. And the buying pool for gold contracted in the 1980s till 2000, contracted from 2012 till 2015, 16, and it has been contracting since August. And the major asset in this category for now is gold. Bitcoin is chasing it. However, if you own one ounce of gold for an eternity, you will still 
own one ounce of gold or one bitcoin at its end. That's it. However, what motivates the investments in gold is the fearful joining that bandwagon on the ups or on the downs. And then he discusses more bubbles over the past 15 years, internet stocks and houses have demonstrated the extraordinary excesses that can be created by combining an initially sensible thesis with well-publicized rising prices. Perfect explanation of the bubble. He was so right both and he's probably right again now. What the wise man does in the beginning, the fool does in the end. And then he speaks how gold is about a pile of gold of 170 metric tons producing nothing, value 9.6 trillion, which is like all the value of farmland in the US probably different now, but what do you want? All the farmland, 16 Exxon Mobiles, the world's most profitable company 10 years ago, not anymore, but you see how these things change. You prefer pile A, gold, or pile B. So this is investing, this is what I focus, of course, but just as part of my 20 position portfolio, I think I might be able to have a good return based on those sentiment and fear. It's also a great indication of what's going on and how the market is breathing, also for my other positions. So just a small portfolio exposure to play on that volatility, to be diversified as the goal of this portfolio is also to be diversified, then I am interested in playing the gold volatility play, depending on the fear and greed of the pool of buyers or sellers. So on my research platform, most of my money is in a pretty concentrated portfolio. I aim to have a maximum of five good positions over time and then balance among them. However, many of my customers demand more diversifications, more ideas, and I have decided this year, last year already, to start a portfolio of 20 positions, so I will invest 30,000 of my money into those positions to have a diversified portfolio. The aim is still to make 10% or more per year, so looking at good businesses that have a good yield, but also to have diversification. My main goal is that when I own something, then you really know it much, much better. Walter Schloss used to say that you can't know a business well enough if you don't own it. So from the pool of 20 stocks that I am now owning on top of the five in my core portfolios, now I want to own and I will know which ones of the 20 might replace some in the top five. And for diversification, gold, a gold miner can be a good part of it also to play on that volatility. And I have done a lot of research on gold miners, so I think I can add value there. The strategy is pretty simple. If it crashes 50%, I'll likely add another thousand to the position. And then if it goes up, let's say sell and balance and have a yield like a part of an all weather diversified portfolio over time. If it goes up 50%, I will likely sell what I have put in and keep the profits for as long as I consider them good there. That's my play on volatility strategy. However, keep in mind the exposure which allows me to play on volatility. Now let's go on to stocks. Beric has been really, really in a bad situation when gold prices were low, but since then it exploded, tripled by August, and then it's down already, what is this, 30%, and now it has rebounded a little bit as gold rebounded. But what is curious is that the company follows gold prices. Here we have gold prices in orange and gold mining barrack in this case in black. And you can see when gold goes down, barrack goes down a little bit more. When gold goes up, barrack goes higher. And this is the normal volatility for gold miners because gold miners have a cost of production. So let's say you have a cost of production like 1000, like barrack. If gold prices are at 1200, you make 200. If gold prices are at 1000, 
700, you make 700 in profit. So you triple the profits if gold goes up 60%. So your increase is three times, gold is 1.6. That difference explains the volatility when it comes to gold miners. And if you're like me playing on volatility, then you prefer gold miners, plus there is a dividend. And if we look at Barrick, just a little bit of fundamentals, we have stable gold production outlook, really, really stable, 4.5 millions of attributable ounces. So they have increased the dividend to 9 cents per share per quarter, that's 33 cents per share. It's not much from an investing perspective, but their cash flows are higher, higher, and higher and their debt has gone to zero because with gold at high they make a lot of money. And the key is that with gold hires they make cash flows of 2.3 billion which has to be compared with the market cap. So 2.3 billion is the value they have created compared to the market cap of 37 billion. The yield is around 7% on the free cash flow at current barrick prices. And here they show how much money they make depending on where gold is. If gold is at 1,900, they make 1 1.3 billion in cash flows in a quarter. If gold is lower, they make less, of course. And they have made a cumulative assessment of how much money they can make over the next five years. If gold is at 1.9 billion, they can make almost 20 billion with gold at 1,200, they will make a little bit less than 10 billion in free cash flows. This is the ups and downs. Of course, if gold goes lower, they will make nil in cash flows. And here is their sales cost. So it costs for Barrick and it's projected that it will cost around $1,000 per ounce to produce and to sell an ounce of gold. I have checked their cash flows in their cash flow statement for 2020 and I get out with 2 billion of cash flows with average gold prices of 1769. I have made a valuation. You can download this comparative stock table of the most recent analysis that I have made. Each company has a comment and a valuation table. And we are now going to check Barrick. And I have put, okay, with gold for the next 10 years at 1,750, 2 billion in cash flows, the intrinsic value for a 10% discount rate with the current terminal multiple of around 12 is 21 billion. So if gold prices stay stable, for me, Barrick is overvalued. Of course, people are betting on gold prices going higher and higher, then yes, then there is still a lot of potential with Barrick, currently fairly valued, but if gold goes to 2,500, then it is undervalued. However, in a bad case scenario, with 1 billion in cash flows, the downside is also 75%, which is something that we have seen in 2015-16. 33% scenarios probability, some value of Barrick is 22 billion. Compared to other opportunities that we have discussed, Barrick is among the expensive ones. Next stock that I have analyzed quickly is Anglo Gold Ashanti. It was on the emerging market list that I'm looking now. And if you look at Anglo Gold, it is much more volatile. So the crash here was huge, 80%. And as stocks rebounded, it exploded on the upside to much more than Barrick. This is because Anglo Gold is a riskier investment. If you look at where they are mining, Ghana, Democratic Republic of Congo, Tanzania, so very risky propositions, Colombia, Argentina, so very, very risky from that perspective, then they still have to invest, okay, to produce. They have a lot of projects, but also in various jurisdictions. However, and their cost of production is relatively high compared to other gold miners of 1,150 per ounce. That's really higher on the cost curve. 
However, if gold stays high, they still make a lot of cash flows, but they make very, very little cash flows if gold goes down. Plus, you have the jurisdiction risk. If we look at my Anglo Gold valuation, with cash flows of 1 billion that they make now, the intrinsic value is around 9 billion, which is the current market cap. If gold goes higher, they will make much more money and be very undervalued. So if you're looking for volatility, Anglo Gold might be the answer. But if gold goes down, they make very little cash flows and you can expect also a 70, 80, 90% decline. Another stock that I have bought for the large portfolio that you can follow on my stock market research platform is Polyus Gold, which is a Russian miner. Just a quick overview. So what's very interesting is that most investors are from North America, UK, continental Europe, and only then from Russia. Okay, so more demand for gold stocks here. The thing with Polyus is that it has a great ore base, so as much in the ground as Barrick. It produces a little bit less, which means that it has 20 years of production as is ahead. Barrick has only 13 years before it has started to invest big to produce more. So this is also very important when it comes to miners. It produces around 2.8 million ounces of gold at very low costs, not 1,000, but around 400 dollars per ounce. So very low cost production. No matter the price of gold, these guys will make money. Plus, and something that I always like when it comes to investing, is the hidden, is that that is not in the balance sheet, that is not in the numbers, that the market isn't looking at. And that's what I'm looking for in every investment. Long term, I look at long term what the market isn't pricing yet, but will start to price in two, three, five years down the road. I'm looking for hidden, unseen value. And this is the dry forest, if I translate it. So Sukhoi Log is a project that has the capacity to produce almost what the company is producing now. So in seven years, this company might be producing much more than Barrick in gold prices at much lower costs, which means it will be two, three times as profitable as Barrick at much lower risk, not risks like Anglo Gold Ashanti. If we look at where Polyus is, is here, Barrick is somewhere in the middle and Anglo Gold is on the higher end of the cost curve. If I look at the valuation, I have taken a dividend because they are big dividend payers and intrinsic value at current gold prices, I expect 32 billion with the addition of Sukhoi log in 2029 only. If best case scenario, higher dividend, 50 billion value market capitalization, worst case, it goes down 50% from the current market capitalization. And that's, if this happens, I'll simply add another one and then manage another thousand and then manage the volatility in the portfolio. That's my strategy. This is what I do and you can check everything that I do on my research platform. A valuation of Polyus 26 billion is the current market capitalization. So from this perspective is even undervalued for a 10% return, which is what I aim off. If it crashes even better, then I can manage the volatility and these guys will keep making money. Plus something important, it's not even on the top 10 holdings of the Vanek Gold Mining Index, even if it will be the biggest miner likely in seven years. So I hope I have given you a lot of value in this gold mining video. Click that like button, keep following. I'll see you on Saturday with Ray Dalio bond video, very important from a long-term macro perspective. And Ray Dalio was very prescient a few years ago with his helicopter money predictions. On my strategy for a stock market crash, just a quick video on Thursday. Thank you. See you in the next video.